Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. A warm welcome to meeting number 37 of Mumbai Speaker Toastmaster Club. I'm Walter Crasto, and it's my pleasure to be the first speaker, the Zoom Master and SLA for this blissful meeting. In last meeting, our general evaluator rightly pointed out that SA opening is monotonous. It's not that exciting or pumping the energy. So onus is on me to boost the energy level. So before I start the guidelines, let's do this small breathing exercise today. So everyone, you just listen and observe me. Sit with straight back and shoulders. Feet resting comfortably on fat, flat floor. Your palms, keep your palms on your thighs facing upward. Then you'll have to close your eyes. Not now, just observe me. Close your eyes gently. Take a deep breath, hold it for two seconds, and then gently release, exhale. We are going to repeat this exercise for five times. So are you ready? So now everyone, please be seated straight, shoulders and your back straight. Keep your palm facing upward on your thighs. Close your eyes gently. Take a deep breath, hold it for two seconds, gently exhale. Second time, take a deep breath, hold it for two seconds, gently exhale. Again, take a deep breath, hold it for two seconds, gently exhale. Now fourth time, take a deep breath, hold it for two seconds, Gently exhale. Now the last time, take a deep breath. Hold it for two seconds. Gently exhale. Relax. Loosen your body. Are you feeling energetic now? Yes. I hope, yes. Okay. That's good. So, yeah. Hello. So let's start with the Zoom guideline. Work together to bring best out of us. On that quote, the Zoom guidelines. Those who are having access to the share button, please do not click on the share button in error. Keep yourself on mute. Please keep your camera switched on so that our speaker can enjoy the virtual stage experience. However, if you are moving around or if there is a background movement, we will recommend you to switch off your camera. As far as possible, speakers and evaluator, please keep your camera at your eye level. Please contact me separately if you are facing any technical issues or connection issues. Whenever you are speaking, try to switch off the notification sound to avoid any interruption in your speech. Rename yourself, rename yourself with meeting role underscore name if you have taken any role or member underscore name or guest underscore name. Please do not post anything on the chat box for all participants in the middle of the speech unless speaker has asked for the audience response. Use reaction button generously to convey your appreciation and applause. Private charts are not really private. They are accessible to the owner of the account. So it is advisable to keep the comments restricted to the meeting underway so that it should be appropriate even if your messages are accessible by someone else. Meeting ground rules. Members are requested to refrain from speaking about three taboo topics, that is sex, religion, and politics. Please check your audio and video connection before you start your speech. You can say check audio, check video, or you can say I'm audible and visible. Please say thank you when taking over the control and say over to you while handing your control to another speaker. Please keep the timer screen in your view whenever you are speaking so that you can see the timers, the card, green, yellow, and red cards. The meeting is being recorded. We may also keep some few pictures. So if you really don't want your video to be recorded, please inform me before you start your speech. Mission statement of Toastmaster. We provide supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skill, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Last meeting word was agog, means very eager, 
or curious to hear. I know today you all are agog to know what's there in store. So without any further ado, let me hand over the control to presiding officer of today's meeting. He is no other than the president of our own club, Toastmaster Glenn. So with big round of applause, please help me welcoming presiding officer of today's meeting, Toastmaster Glenn. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Walter. May I order you, Glenn? Yeah. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Walter. Am I audible? Yeah, you always. Yes, you are. Okay, okay perfect. Who are you? Uh, yeah. I think that was a real refreshing exercise here this morning. Thank you for arranging that for us. Uh, good morning, fellow Toastmasters and esteemed guests. It gives me immense pleasure to announce that our club has won the prestigious Smedley Award. You heard that right. For the benefit of all, this award was named after Toastmaster Ralph Smedley, who is the founder of Toastmasters. And the award is given to those who, those clubs that add a minimum of five members, either new, new, or reinstated during the period of August 1st to September 30th. Now this, of course, wouldn't have been possible without the painstaking efforts which have been put in by our very own VPM Cup VPR, Deep Shah, VP8 Sudha Warrior, and our co-founder, Babu Narayan. While the ribbons are still in transit, let's put our hands together for the big three of Mumbai speakers. We have seen some astonishing we have seen some astonishing results due to the efforts put in by these leaders. While awards and accolades are great ways to build teams and motivate people, the real concern that I have is how do you build leaders in a culture where leaders are encouraged to sacrifice people to meet arbitrary numbers. You get what I'm saying? Now, if only there was an easy fix to this problem. Maybe not today, maybe tomorrow. I welcome you. Raise your hand and nominate yourself to be a future leader at Mumbai Speakers, where you can demonstrate and practice your leadership skills. With that, let me go around the room and check if we have any guests here today. Do we have any guests on the meeting? I don't think so, right? Guys, am I audible? Okay. Yes, you are. Yeah. We have a new guest for sure from your side. Oh, from my side? Oh, yeah. yeah sorry. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, guys. That's unfortunate. Um, anyways, moving on with the theme of today's meeting. Uh, since we don't have any guests at the moment, definitely, um, you know, as and when the guests join in, we will reach out to them and uh, catch up with them and see how they do it later today. Today, I also will go about and introduce the TMOD for today's meeting. Now, he is the immediate past president of Mumbai Speakers. Apologies for that, guys. But yes, coming back to the introduction of the TMOD, he is the immediate past president. Okay. Right. 
Okay. He's the immediate past president of Mumbai Speakers, uh, past area director, uh, has founded clubs not only in Mumbai, but in Oman too, an engineer and a management graduate from Bajaj Institutes. His hobbies include reading, um, also the stock market. I'm really unsure of how that can be a hobby, but yoga, traveling, playing tennis, and of course, Toastmasters. Uh, let me read this right. Uh, I'm a little confused today. Am I calling upon the general evaluator or the TMOD of the day? Uh, it says TMOD. So guys, let's put our hands together to none other than our very own Sir Babu Narayan. So Babu, welcome to the stage. Thank you, Mr. President. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, okay. you are. Okay. Thank you so much for those very warm words of introduction. Yes, uh, to answer your uh, surprise as to what I'm doing in the stock market as a hobby. Well, in fact, I've kept it as a hobby because if I had turned professional, I don't know how much time I would have had for Toastmasters. I would have been too busy making money there. So any which way, I'm happy that things are as they are. And a very good morning to all of you, my fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. Let me begin by showing you uh, an image of a few personalities whom we have seen all our lives and whom we will continue to revere perhaps in future as well. May I request uh, Toastmaster Sudha if she can uh, just share this image because I'm having a bit of a technical glitch here. Sudha, will you be able to just post that image? Sure. Definitely. Uh, Deep sharing rights. You please. have the right, you have the right. Uh, you can continue. I will share it in a minute. Okay, fine. Okay, so here would be the three images of world leaders. Now, basically what I want to ask you is not their names because that would become a no-brainer. I think uh, every person in this world knows who those uh, leaders are. I would like to put on your thinking caps and tell me what is it that has made all these people, what they are, what are the qualities that they brought to the table, which made them so famous, so world-renowned. Maybe you can just post a line or two on the chat box and uh, let us know what is in your mind as to why you think they have deserved to be good leaders. Yes, I can see courage, selflessness, vision, Honesty, walk the talk, wow. common good, yeah. Okay, 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 great. Leadership, perseverance, yes. You know what? I should have probably sent this uh, image to all of you right at the beginning, maybe before uh, uh, a couple of days. And I think I would have got the entire meat for the entire... Uh, Toastmaster session today. I think you have posted all the relevant messages and the qualities that probably I was looking for. Now, going ahead, if you are wondering why I really chose this particular topic or the theme for today's meeting, it is because leadership in general, as you would all agree with me, is the need of the art anywhere in any organization, any which place that you are. And I would say more so in a place like Toastmasters and definitely more specifically today in Mumbai speakers, because we are at the cusp 
of our next elections to elect the executive committee for the next six months. So that's why I thought perhaps this is one theme which would make some sense and have some relevance in today's meeting. We shall, however, discuss a lot more about leadership in the next couple of hours. What I will do is, based on my little experience in the corporate world, and based on my little learnings and the experience that I've garnered, let me list out some of the characteristics that I have put down to be a good and effective leader. These are the nine characteristics or the nine C's, as I call it. The first one, the first C, stands for curiosity. They say curiosity kills the cat. But when it comes to leadership, I don't think that particular proverb applies. Because unless a leader is curious enough to know what's going on around him, I think his learnings are quite blinkered. And in this, I would like to say that this curiosity should also be to know who are your yes men. Quite often we are surrounded by a lot of yes men who will always be appraising, applauding, appreciating you. And we need to sift the grain from the chaff to know which are accolades and which are not. So it is very important for us to have a very discerning eye to really know what is the real accolade that is coming our way. So this is a different, slightly different take on curiosity other than the one that you probably know about. The second obviously is creativity. Creativity to try and contribute something different. Innovation. Today, if you look at the industry in general, a lot of industrialists have started thinking about electric vehicles because they feel that the age of oil, the age of shale gas is probably coming to a close. And this is probably going to herald a new industrial revolution. That is creativity for you. And perhaps the early bird here will definitely get the worm. Renewable energy. That's another area which creativity will take you very far. Well, why do we have to think only of industry? Think of Toastmasters. They have really felt that perhaps it is time for a change. And in 2020, they introduced pathways, which again was a bit of a revolution, particularly for people like us who have been so used to the traditional program. So creativity is one area which is very important to leadership. Third C, definitely character. I don't think there are uh, any two ways or any two opinions on how important character is. And I would say the most important aspect of character is to know really the difference between the right and the wrong. And character is built out of habits, as they say, out of actions, out of what you are able to do on a regular basis and build into your system. So the third C is character. The fourth C is courage. And courage means involving yourself in whatever you are planning to do. Full-hearted, wholehearted commitment, even if it is at the cost of your entire world going upside down. In Toastmasters, I'm not, I do not want to uh, uh, say it because I want to brag it, but today was a day when I virtually felt that I would not be able to take up the role because my sister was here and they were all leaving town. But I said, nothing doing. I have taken up this role and I will commit to it. So I think courage to take up and execute what you have set out for yourself is very important. Fifth, conviction. Passion to do something like the images that I showed. If you uh, look at the personalities like Martin Luther King and Nelson Mandela, they had the fire in the belly, the adrenaline 
the one minded single minded goal to achieve what they wanted to do at any cost we have seen this in corporate worlds we have seen this in the industry we have seen this in our social milieu as well the sixth c is charisma now this is a very controversial c because what is charisma to you may not be charisma to me but all the same we need to endeavor to build build this aspect of leadership in us because this is the one ingredient which is going to draw a lot of people to what you are going to say in life and by virtue of that you are perhaps going to make them follow what you say and take everyone towards a common goal c again comes for competence need i harp much on this yes you may have all the other c's with you but at the end of the day if you are going to fall short in what you set out to achieve if you fall short in your competence levels i think the entire exercise goes for a toss so competence is very very important and it's absolutely essential for us whether in our professional lives whether in personal lives or in toastmasters to ensure that we build up these competence levels to the desired outcomes and of course the most interesting c which i think all of us relate to day in and day out in toastmasters is communication communication to face the reality and to face the truth i do not mean just the ability to speak good language it is the ability to see for yourself what reality is even if it is painful and this is where i take pride in being a toastmasters because if communication is one big aspect of leadership i think toastmasters helps us in being good communicators good communicators in terms of transparency in how honest we are how loyal we are how trustworthy we are uh, to each other to the club to the organization and that is where you see r i s c r i s c is the absolute core of the toastmasters organization respect integrity service excellence and of course the last last c the ninth c is common sense an ingredient which as they say is not very common in life um in fact i read about this common sense somewhere it goes like this common sense is like a spice which ensures that your decision is marinated well in the pot of decision making and in today's parlance we call it smelling the coffee so if we are able to smell the coffee not at all times at least but at most of the times i think we would have well earned the right perhaps to be a good leader now i'm sure one of you might be thinking why is this man going on all about nine c's and leadership i don't think i would want to be a good leader i am quite happy in what i am so if any one of you is even thinking on those lines let me ask uh, all of you rather in school how many of you were perhaps called on by a school teacher to be a class monitor or a school prefect or a boy scout or a girl guide and how many of you enjoyed and reveled in doing that you might just show me a raise of hands if any one of you had oh great i can see at least sudha i can see uh, yeah. who else is there oh great that's great mahak yeah so yeah that's nice so obviously we have started out somewhere on the leadership trail knowingly or unknowingly and i think that is where perhaps the seeds of leadership were sown by our teachers and by our professors going to college how many of you were probably involved in projects and some of you were team leaders for a projects and you performed your 
responsibilities with great aplomb. Is there anyone here in this group? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Good. So, so like, uh, I, I forget the Toastmaster uh, who said, I, I see someone in you. So I'm beginning to see the leaders in all of you at this point of time. So that's great. And going on further, I'm sure many of you in your own careers, you have displayed great leadership qualities, whether in a sales team, whether in an audit team, whether in an IT team or a legal team or whatever it is. And you have ensured that your leadership qualities came to the fore. So the point that I would like to make here is that virtually in every facet of life, we can see the emergence of these leadership qualities and which we shall try and explore what it relates to in the world of Toastmasters in the next couple of hours. In fact, I've been saying next couple of hours, I don't know how many couple of hours I've made already. So anyway, today, let us now begin with the session proper. So today as the leader of the meeting, I have a team of role players who will help me in the task of conducting this meeting. And for that, I have with me the tag team or the trio as I call them. And to help me kickstart the proceedings, I would like to invite our very own affable Toastmaster, Toastmaster Usha, who will be performing the role of the R counter. Madam Toastmaster Usha, are you there? Yes, thank you. And can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and my guest. My role as the R counter could not have been on a better day because I'm not just going to, to perform the role, but in a way, I'm going to act this out. I would, you would see a lot of sneezes and cuffs in between, and I hope it is not much of a disturbance for all of you. <clears throat> well, and as an R counter, I usually notice unnecessary sounds used by the speakers and roll bearers. They include the crutch words, R, uh, R, uh, um, filler words, but, like, so, okay, filler phrases, you know, and so, etc. Extremely long pauses. Although these little words don't add any meaning to your statements, however, they are not bad in itself. They sometimes help us to focus on what we are speaking about. However, when it becomes a habit, the speaker is not aware of the use of them and they lower the quality of speech. Today, um, Babu Narayan talked about the word habit and there is something beautiful about this word habit itself. When you remove you remove H from habit, a bit remains. Remove A and still a bit remains. Remove B and it remains. So what it means that we are not conscious of the use of these filler words. Today, I would make an attempt to note down the unconscious words that you keep repeating when speaking and would present that at the end of the day. Just to add a bit, we also happen to use unnecessary words in written communication. In Toastmaster, we are not aware of the same, but I want to use this to actually also focus you all on the fact that even in a written conversation, we sometimes use a lot of unnecessary words. So let us be conscious of written conversation too. Thank you and handing it over to the Toastmaster. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster Rusha, for a very elaborate introduction to your R counters role. And now let us move on to our second role player in the tag team. And this will be played by Toastmaster Mahek, who will be the grammarian for today. But before I, oh, the spotlight is already on her, I would just like to tell you about her take on what I asked her about a good leader. And this is what she had to say. A good leader is someone who commands, a great one leads, understands the depth of being at a position, 
understands that now people look up to you understands what that kind of power means well well thought provoking indeed mahek uh, over to you for your version of what the grammarian's role is today toastmaster mahek thank you toastmaster babu uh, and my fellow toastmasters and all the guests i think there are no guests but okay um uh, as grammarian today it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all the speakers listening carefully to their use of language once someone said the greatest mistake a man can ever make is being afraid to make one so i'll be taking notes note of your mistakes and not so correct use of the english language as well as examples of awesome usage as grammarian it is also my duty to introduce you to the word of the day for today's meeting the word of the day is reverence which means deep respect for someone or something i repeat the word of the day is reverence which means deep respect for someone or something i'll be putting it in the chat box in just a few minutes uh, an example of using this word is children are taught to show reverence towards their grandparents each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the word of the day that is reverence i would request the audience to show a silent thumbs up or a heart i'll give you i will give the word or word of the day report the grammatical usage report when called upon by the general evaluator at the end of the meeting over to you to master of the day babu sir thank you very much to master mahek uh, let me kick start your word of the day by saying that while indeed we should endeavor to have an enjoyable fun filled meeting full of learning let us also give due reverence to the time aspect of it for which i would request the timer whom i shall be calling next to uh, keep me on my toes and to keep the other role players also on their toes whenever we are shooting off track uh, in terms of time and now i would like to invite yes the timer toastmaster hardik in fact before that i would uh, just like to uh, tell the format of the program uh, we don't have any guest uh, today but then uh, i would still like to reiterate that every toastmasters program a normal program generally consists of three segments which is the prepared speeches followed by the table topics and then the evaluation i would now like to call upon the timer to give us the timing details for the prepared speech segment only and to come back at the start of each segment and give the relevant timings at that point of time so let us invite toastmaster hardik for giving us the timing guidelines and before he does that i would just like to tell you what his take was on the uh, leadership aspects and he made it very short and simple he said for me a good leader should have honesty and focus yes absolutely and i am sure you are as you will be as honest in your timings today and you will be very focused to deliver a good timing report over to you toastmaster hardik thank you toastmaster wahu <clears throat> so as a timer i will be helping speakers to express their thoughts within the allotted time limits my duty is to time prepared speeches table topics speech evaluate speech and evaluate or table uh, uh, prepared speeches and uh, evaluations so for table topics the ta uh, each evaluator is a uh, uh, each speaker is encouraged to speak for 1 to 2 minutes uh, let us take a timing now only for the prepared speeches uh, we can you can come back again for the table topics later can, do you have the timings for all the speeches now yes yes for prepared, prepared speeches, speeches yeah the time allotted uh, will be 5 to 7 minutes and uh, okay is it uh, i think for the ice breaker it will be 4 to 6 minutes right yes for ice breaker it would be 4 to 6 minutes okay okay fine okay great then thank you so much and uh, we look forward 
to your interruption or whatever you wish to call it from time to time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. And now let us begin with the business at hand, which is the prepared speeches. And for this, I would like to call on the first speaker of the morning. And this will be Toastmaster Vishal Mehta. Now, Toastmaster Vishal is delivering his speech from the Dynamic Leadership Pathways. It will be obviously his first speech, the icebreaker speech, and he's starting his maiden journey in Toastmasters and he would need all the encouragement, all the support from us during the speech and even after. When I asked him about what he felt was his take on leadership, he said, a leader is one who finds a way to get people to believe in themselves. I think it couldn't have been better said, uh, Toastmaster Vishal. But before I invite Toastmaster Vishal to uh, deliver his speech, may I call on his evaluator, Toastmaster Prerna, uh, to tell us about the objectives. Oh, is it Pernita? Oh, I don't know. Okay, maybe I got that wrong. Okay, sorry. Okay, Toastmaster Pernita. Okay. So I request you to outline the objectives of the icebreaker for uh, the benefit of everyone. Over to you, Toastmaster Parnita. Good morning, everyone, again. Morning. Speaker Vishal Mehta, as already announced, is attempting level one, project one. That is an icebreaker speech from his chosen pathway, Dynamic Leadership. The purpose of this project or speech is for the speaker to introduce himself to the club, along with this motive of learning the basic structure of a public speech. And timer, please note the timing limit for this icebreaker speech is four to six minutes. And with that, all the best, my target speaker, Vishal. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Parnita. And now let us hear from Toastmaster Vishal. Toastmaster Vishal, the journey, the journey, Toastmaster Vishal, over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, uh, Babu. Uh, fellow Toastmasters, my name is Vishal Mehta. I'm a hardcore Mumbaiite and I live in Ville Pale. I'm a regular Gujarati guy who just loves the regular food. But in today's world of Facebook and Instagram, the regular is often and easily termed as boring. So I may seem like a boring guy to some. Now, as a boring as it may again sound, I did my regular engineering and got a regular IT job after some initial days of regular struggling. I'm currently working as a regional IT manager for a leading research and advisory company called Gartner for over 15 years. I'm hoping that there is nothing so regular, at least about this part. I would like to think that I'm currently a happily single guy. I'm not sure if those two words, happy and single, combined together makes any sense. I also have a younger sister who I think is also getting badly influenced by my happily single status. And of course, our parents are not loving it, especially my mother. Now, my mother is a regular housewife who just loves religious activities. For her, worshipping God and watching Asta and Sanskar channel several hours in a day are great hobbies. Whenever she asks me, Vishal, when are you getting married? My answer to her most of the time is, well, only God would know. So why don't you just ask this question there? On the other hand, my father, who is now a retired businessman, is somewhat chilled in this matter. Well, at least he seems to be so far. You see, the push hasn't come to shove yet. So I would say I'm still enjoying my singlehood. But jokes apart, I would not be standing here if my father or grandfather were thinking like me. My grandfather has been my ultimate role model. I have tremendous reverence for him and his humble story keeps inspiring me at every moment of life. At the age of 17, he left his home in Ahmedabad and came to Mumbai all alone, barefooted. The reason that he told us later in life was because his mother had many children and since they were very poor, it was difficult to put food on the table for everyone every day. My grandfather, being the eldest son, 
only left the house so that his mother had one less person to worry about when it came to putting food on the table. In Mumbai, he eventually got a job of a mukadam in a Gujarati businessman's office and slept on the office floor for many years. With his years of dedication, sincerity, and integrity, he won the trust of his boss and soon became the office manager and his most trusted business advisor. He also started his own business and gave our family the financial stability needed for a better quality of life. My dream is to try and provide an even better quality of life to my family and live life to the fullest of my ability. I grew up as a shy and reserved kid and I realized at one point in my life that if I had to grow, I must embrace speaking in public and learn how to do it. Something that I should have probably done in school already, taking part in some debates and extempore speech competitions. But I'm so glad that we have such a fantastic platform of Toastmasters that even if you miss this train in school, you can still catch it at any time. I would really like to thank some of my office colleagues who brought the Toastmasters Club to my attention during a meeting. Uh, over the years, while having some speech difficulties during my childhood, I also realized a few things about public speaking along the way. Yes, speaking in public could be uncomfortable and I would get nervous. My heart would beat out of my chest. My palms would get sweaty and my face would get hot. But I also realized one thing that I'm not going to die from it. From my life experiences so far, I keep reminding myself that I need to constantly shift my focus on how to look at situations with the right perspective and how it can add more value to the quality of life and make you feel more fulfilled. Coming back to my marital status, I would like to end my icebreaker speech on a slightly funny note. I'm not sure how true this is, but I often heard one of my close relatives say this, Aaj khushi se jilo, kya pata kal shadi ho jaye. Osho said, a wise person does not get married, but you only become wise after you get married. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster, should I say, Vishal, regular Mehta. <laughs> I, I don't think your speech was anywhere near boring, but let me tell you one thing. I'm sure a lot of married men here are surely going to envy your single status. Let us now raise in and give a standing ovation for our Toastmaster, who has finally broken the ice and have started the Toastmasters journey. May I ask the audience to rise and give a standing ovation. If you cannot, yes, you can raise your hands and give a standing ovation to Toastmaster Vishal Mehta. Great start. And now, thank you so much. I request all the members to take 30 seconds to give your valuable feedback for our speaker, Toastmaster Shah. You can, you can send it on a personal chat to him or message him on WhatsApp, whichever is convenient. Okay, are we done? Yeah. Now let's move on. Now, as you would have heard when the Sergeant at Arms opened the meeting at the outset, he outlined the mission of the Toastmasters Club, which I shall reiterate now. The mission of a Toastmasters Club, he said, <laughs> Can we have uh, the audio on mute, please? Yeah, thank you. The mission of a Toastmasters Club is to provide a mutually supportive and positive learning experience 
in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills. Now, many a time we get carried away by the communication aspect and forget to note that there is a huge component of leadership skill which is built into this program of Toastmasters. And let me complete it, resulting in greater self-confidence and growth. Now, for some of the members who are quite new to Toastmasters, may I add that these leadership opportunities start at the club level, like the club that we are in. And then it goes up to the area, which is the next level, division, district, region, and the international level. Here again, the question would be, oh, that seems to be a very long journey. Will I be up to it? And to make you feel a little better and comfortable, let me talk about one person or refer to one person of our own. In fact, he is our homebred Toastmaster. He was a, an accountant working in New Delhi. And in 2019, 2020, the year 2019-2020, he went on to become the first Indian international president of Toastmasters International. Just to uh, do a little bit of quiz, does anyone know who uh, this person was? Does, uh, does any one of you know his name? Was he Dhananjaya? I think I'm talking of the president, not the uh, champion speaker. Manoj Vasudev. Deepak. No, no. Ye yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Deepak Menon. That's right. Yes. Deepak Menon. He was the first Indian uh, international president of Toastmasters International. And I would say that's really a great feat in an organization which always used to be predominantly uh, occupied by the American Toastmasters. So he really, in a way, I mean, it's not probably the right word or terminology to break the glass ceiling, which we normally use for the ladies or the fairer sex, but he really broke that ceiling and went on to become one. So the point that I'm trying to make is that nothing is impossible in Toastmasters. And therefore, we should all strive to see that we emulate the footsteps of Deepak Menon as well. Now, in this session, therefore, let us focus on the leadership opportunities that are available at the club level, which is defined by what we call the executive committee, at least seven of whom uh, are, are in the club at the moment, probably a few in attendance right now. And these are the seven leadership positions that are on offer for the next term of Mumbai speakers. Now, as we go along, I shall try and explain some of uh, the details, the roles and the responsibilities of each uh, one of these positions. Now, the first position that I would like to touch upon here is that obviously of the Sergeant at Arms, who in fact is the first voice we hear at the start of any Toastmaster session, like the voice of Toastmaster Walter, whom we hear every Sunday, first thing in the morning when we log in to the Zoom meeting and start the session. And he so very beautifully spelt out the protocols of the meeting as a true Sergeant at Arms should do. To touch upon a bit of the role that a sergeant at arms is supposed to do, he is expected to make arrangements for the meeting. Now, normally what happens is in a physical meeting, the responsibilities get a little more diverse because you've got to arrange for the venue, for the hall, to ensure that the watchman, the security is there, probably to open the room, to ensure that the board is done up, the banners are in place and so many other things. I'm not saying that it's much less here in Zoom, uh, I think it's equally a responsible thing in Zoom as well. But in a physical meeting, it is much, much 
more challenging. Now, if uh, the next question from one of you is, when are we going to have a physical meeting? Well, that discussion will be for another day. So suffice it to say that the Sergeant at Arms role is a very, very important role in any XCOM. And I would urge each and every one of you who's just joined Toastmasters to take up this role at the next XCOM. Because more than anything else, it is you who will have an opportunity at every meeting to speak. Even I may not have the chance, even a Joy or a Subramaniam may not have a chance, but the Sergeant at Arms will definitely be the voice to be heard at the beginning of every meeting. Okay, so that done for the Sergeant at Arms, that was just a brief. Uh, I'm sure uh, Madam Toastmaster Sudha has already sent uh, the details of all the roles and responsibilities. And all those who are interested for each of these roles may please reach out to any one of the senior Toastmasters here. So let us now move on with our prepared speeches. And we now go on to our second speech. And this is going to be by Toastmaster Ajay Sharma. He will be delivering his L1 P2 from the Presentation Mastery Manual. But before I call on Toastmaster Ajay Sharma, uh, let me call on his uh, evaluator. And today we have Toastmaster Glenn who would be evaluating Toastmaster Ajay. So can we have Glenn on the spotlight? Uh, there's a slight uh, change, Babu. Uh, I think Joy has taken up the evaluation this time. He's ready oh, with yeah. everything. He's ready with everything. It just happened during the course of the meeting. So I couldn't uh, clearly... I put it on the roll. Oh, 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 okay, okay. No problem. Uh, uh, it's always, of course, like I said, whether it's Glenn or Joy, the Joy is always us. So over to you, Joy, and let's hear from you. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Day, Babu. All right, so my speaker today, Ajay Sharma, he'll be attempting uh, project two under level one of the presentation mastery. And the purpose is for him to learn or review basic research methods and present a well-organized, well-researched speech on any topic. Timer, please note the speech timing will be from five to seven minutes. So all the best to Ajay. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Joy. So let us now move on and listen to what Toastmaster Ajay has to say in his speech, which is titled, Can Hyphen Certainty. Can Certainty Toastmaster Ajay. Please confirm if I'm audible and uh, visible. Okay, thank you so much. Very good morning to Toastmaster and fellow Toastmaster, my dear guest. When we heard about the cancer word first time, what comes first in your mind? It is a very severe and dangerous disease. Indeed, it is. Cancer can develop almost anywhere in our body. Usually, it occurred when something goes wrong in the process of making cells, and that cells keep multiplying in the body. The older and abnormal cells did not die by themselves when they should. When the, when the cancer cells grow out of control, they can, they can circle out the normal cells. This makes our body difficult to work. These cells may form tumors, which are nothing but the lumps of tissue in the body. These tumors can be cancerous. <laughs> it can rapidly spread, travel to nearby tissue, or create a new tumor. But at the other hand, cancer in the blood known as leukemia do not travel and spread to nearby tissue. As per the index 2021, approximately 70% of death occur in low and middle income countries. The primary reasons for the cancer are due to use of tobacco in any form high body index mass, intake of less fruit and vegetables, lack of physical activity. These are some of the social factors, the environmental factors, including exposure to different chemical and radiation. 
The world is suffering because of cancer. And my family not left with it. I take you 20 years back. My younger brother, he was at age of 17. He was physically fit and active. But after a few days, we had noticed that he was not eating well. Often he has fever in the night. Somehow, we thought it was because of the viral disease and we took him at a local doctor and he gave some medicines. After a few days, we went to our native place because of our cousin's marriage. At village, his health was declined and we approached to one of our local doctor. He checked and he referred to one of the specialist doctor. After so many tests, medical reports, they had concluded that he had a stage one blood cancer known as chronic myeloid leukemia, short form CML. When we heard, we were completely shocked and decided to return Mumbai at immediately. After reaching to Mumbai, I always felt that we were very fortunate to get the appointment early from Tata and his statement was started quickly. After so many tests, medical report, chemotherapy, Tata has referred to one of their trust known as Max Foundation. Max Foundation is a global based US trust who supply the medicine free of cost to low and middle income countries. They are prisons across the globe from last 25 years. I still recollect the medicine called imatinib, which cured my brother effectively. And his symptoms were disappeared slowly. He takes this medicine every day till death. This is the first incident. And my second encounter was close to my younger sister, who was also detected blood cancer. It's known as acute myeloid leukemia. Since she was married, her family took care very well in terms of financially, and they provided the best treatment to her. After so many chemotherapies, so many tests, so many medical reports, she was cured and she is still under medication. I always feel that life is fragile. And someone nicely quoted, health is wealth, reverence to the person who quoted this. To keep minor healthy, we should avoid taking tobacco in any form, such as the raw tobacco, chewing tobacco, or smoking. We should also avoid eating processed food. We should do some kind of physical activity, such as doing a yoga, running, or meditation. I can recommend it a good course known as Vipassana. Please go and check. I'm going to share the link on the chat box. Please go and see. Thank you so much. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day, Babu, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Rajay, for those uh, wonderful words uh, of wisdom in, in some ways about health. No doubt that health is wealth, and I think we should endeavor to do all that is possible to ensure that we keep it as perfect 
and in good condition as possible. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Before we move on, let us take another 30 seconds and uh, try and give Toastmaster Rajay some feedback on how his speech has gone down. Okay, if we are done with that. Now, before I move on to the third speaker of the morning, let me take on or present to you a, few, a little bit of information on the second role, which I would like to talk about in the XCOM. And that is what we call the secretary. A very common word, common parlance all over. And in Toastmasters, it assumes, in fact, greater significance because it is the job of the secretary to ensure that all the club executive committee meetings are held on time. The club member contact information is well maintained, but more importantly, all the minutes of the meeting of what we do week in and week out are all kept well archived for reference at a future date. But what I like most about this position, more than the details that I've spelled out, is that this position hones your listening, your writing, and to some extent, your creative skills as well. In fact, I've seen a lot of secretaries who post minutes differently, not just in the text form. I've seen them putting it in picture form, images, uh, juxtaposed with text, data and a lot of things. So there's a lot that the secretary can do to bring a lot of uh, newness into this particular role. And let me also add here that having chartered a couple of clubs, I got to know that the secretary's role is as important as the president because in the charter form, apart from the president, it is the secretary's signature which carries a lot of weight. So you know what I'm talking about. So please make a note of this and also look at all the responsibilities and the roles in detail. Okay, and now let us move on to our third speech of the morning. And this will be delivered by our VP membership and a lot of other VP hats which he puts on his head from time to time. Toastmaster Deep will be delivering his L2P2 speech from the Dynamic Leadership Manual uh, Pathways. And when I asked him about his take on what leadership meant to him, he said simply, courage, loyalty, and a sense of humor. And to me, to some extent, he has echoed all the qualities that he has perhaps in himself. A man of courage, a man of loyalty, and definitely a man with a sense of humor. But before I call him to take the stage, let us hear from his evaluator, Toastmaster Tanvi. I hope there's no change here, Rasuda. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Tanvi, you're there. Great. So let's hear from you on the objective of this speech. Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. So today, uh, my target speaker, Toastmaster Deep, we will be attempting the second speech from the second project of the second level of dynamic leadership, which is his pathway. The title of the speech is M-A-S-I. I'm not sure if it is going to be Masi, but... Um, <laughs> The purpose of this project is for the member to learn about different communication styles and to identify his primary style. And the purpose of this speech is for the member to share the impact of his style on others. With that, I wish you all the best. And please note the timing limit is five to seven minutes. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster Tanvi. And now let us hear from 
our hard working and diligent toastmaster toastmaster deep on what he means by m.a.s.i masi from toastmaster deep over to you thank you so much toastmaster of the day toastmaster babu fellow toastmasters and dear guests a few days ago i was invited to a party at one of my friends place and being he being a party animal had all kinds of friends around and an entire bar well lit at his home and as we all have it there was one person one of his friends who drank more than he was supposed to. so there he was sitting at the bar and to the bartender in his usual drunk appetite he said no more gin <laughs> now the bartender sat there confused because he did not understand whether if he wanted more gin or he was saying no to the gin that the bartender was offering to him and this is a classical example of miscommunication which reiterates the importance of communication in our day to day lives and i would like to say that there are different styles of communication which we employ at different points in our life so here's another example all of us know there was diwali festive season around the corner and in diwali we have a lot of guests most of which we have or have not invited and one of such guests at my place came was my masi when she came home we usually was expecting guests but we were not expecting so many guests and as a result of that the supply of food at our house got as a scarcity and that was at that second that we understood the reverberance of having extra food in our house so there my mother was the second my masi entered with my masa she pulled me aside to the kitchen and said to me in a direct order that we have less food at our house i want you to go to the grocery store immediately buy a thumbs up buy some farsan and buy kaju katri sweets here is the money when i was just about to leave from the front door she pulled me once again and said don't go through the living room take the back door now ladies and gentlemen this was a style of communication called direct style where i did not have any negotiating power by the way i like pepsi more than thumbs up but this was a direct order from my commander in chief which i could not violate at all meanwhile when i was going to get the groceries and when i came back my masi was very initiating in the conversation i was trying to hide the bag which i had behind my back just not to embarrass myself in front of everyone when my masi was initiating a lot of conversation she was asking questions how was your engineering where are you working what is your role there how are you working for a finance company after engineering what will you do next will you do a cfa will you do an mba and i am trying to step by step move towards the kitchen and finding a way to escape all these while my masi had a very initiating tone of communication style where i was being very supportive trying to answer all her questions and not having a little bit of a controversy when i went inside give the groceries to my mom i had to come outside and answer all the questions in detail then the question came am i going to go for an mba or a cfa as a next step in my career at this point my dad was very analytical trying to balance the pros and cons of the mba so this style was the analytical style of communication that my dad had. so based on this scenario we have seen that there are multiple styles of communication and the million dollar question for me was which is my primary style of communication because i do feel that all of us at some point or another employ a different style of communication so to take the survey i went on the toastmasters website and i did a survey for myself and the results were little astonishing for me out of 10 marks i got 6 as a direct style of communication or as they say behind every successful man there is a woman so behind my communication style there is my mom this 
second or the style of communication that i had was supportive because when my mom gives me orders i am supportive you know crux if you want to remember all the different styles of communication you can remember the word masi m stands for my mother's direct style of communication a stands for the analytical style of communication that my dad had s stands for the supportive kind of communication that i was doing while answering all the questions that my masi was asking and i is the initiating style of communication where a person asks more question than the other person is ready to answer with that let me ask you this question my masi came home for my style of communication so toastmaster of the day babu which style of communication do you have over to you thank you toastmaster deep for that comprehensive uh, overview of all the communication style and definitely whenever i think of communication i will think of masi for sure thank you so much for that wonderful speech and let's give 30 seconds for our feedback for toastmaster deep okay before we move on to our last speaker of the morning let me touch upon another role in the ex executive committee and this is the one who holds the purse strings and at the moment we have him we can see him on our screen busy counting on his fingers i think he's counting all the money that we have had for mumbai speakers i'm referring to toastmaster joy but anyway that uh, apart what is actually the role of the treasurer as the name suggests the role is to ensure that you collect member fees submit all the fees on time to toastmasters international keep a dossier record accounts of all the money that has come in that has gone out prepare the financial reports submit it to the club at least twice a year my take on the role of the treasurer is simply this perhaps a person who's got some mind bend of mind for number crunching and perhaps who can devote a couple of hours every week should be able to fit the bill okay let us now move on to our fourth speaker of the evening or rather morning and this is going to be delivered by our own vp education toastmaster sudha this is a project l3p2 from the pathways motivational strategies and before i call on her evaluator let me just tell you what she had to say when i asked her about leadership she said according to me you are either born a leader or a leader because of circumstances i might be both but my inherent need to look for improvement and bring about positive changes along with my need to fight for justice might have been the start of leadership thanks to bad i don't know whether i should be quoting this thanks to bad leadership around there is enough scope for this was that meant to be censored uh, sudha i don't know okay it's not about toast masters is lot of things around in life politicians for example okay okay thank god <laughs> okay then so let us hear from her evaluator and today we have 
a seasoned Toastmaster, Toastmaster Shweta, who would tell us about the objectives of this speech from Sudha. Over to you, Toastmaster Shweta. Thank you, Toastmaster Babu. So today, Toastmaster Sudha is attempting her level three, project two speech from the motivational strategies pathway, which is an elective project about knowing your humor style, style of humor, right? So as part of this project, uh, she is supposed to build up a repertoire of anecdotes and also present them in the speech form, right? And commendably, in addition to the um, speech criteria that she already has, she also wants to uh, try using vocal variety to an extent and would like to be evaluated on terms of that as well. So um, here's wishing uh, Toastmaster Sudha all the very best for her speech delivery. Timer, please note that uh, the speech timing is five to seven minutes for her. Thank you and over to you, Thank you. Toastmaster Shweta. Okay. Thank you, Toastmaster Shweta. And now it's on to the speech of Toastmaster Sudha. The title is, It's There, Look For It. Intriguing title, It's There, Look For It. Toastmaster Sudha, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me? See me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 human voice is the organ of the soul and is the most perfect instrument of all. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. What was I trying to do just now? You thought you were in a music class. No, we are in a Toastmasters meeting where I'm going to be talking about vocal variety and narrating some incidents which in my life bought a smile now to me, but then it was embarrassing, shocking, revealing, and left me exceedingly amused at that time. So what is vocal variety? The most important embellishment of every speech. The four Ps, as they say, being essential for public speaking. The pitch, the pace, the power, and the pauses. So these are some funny incidents which I would love to share with you and hope it brings a smile to you as much as it did to me. Me being a hardcore Saudi that I was, South E, South Indian, came to Mumbai and in keeping in my culinary tendencies, wanted the recipe of making idlis and dosas at home. My great cook mom, mole um, on the moon, okay, Adana proportion, understood. Okay, mom, understood. Obediently, just decided to be generous with the scale of proportion and made it one kilo to three kilos. After getting the grinding of the soaked rice in the urud dal in that unique proportion, I decided to keep it for fermentation for the next day cooking. That night was just like a calm before the storm. As we woke up to only see the river Ganges in the form of idli, dosa, batter had flown in all directions. And the probiotic bacteria had multiplied incessantly with discomforting odor spreading everywhere. We all decided to give up our clothes. No, those were in the cabinet and call the Bandiwali, Bandiwali to purchase these clothes in exchange of the vessels because we couldn't store five kilos of batter. 
a punishment for not listening to the instructions rightly and ask for clarifications if required. Friends, fortunate that these lessons were learned before my marriage. I don't know how my family would have reacted to it otherwise. Next, it was in the fag end of the 20th century that I decided to tie the knot to the man of my life. It was surely not a conventional arranged marriage. I had broken the convention in the warrior tradition and my husband in the Sundaram's legacy and we both came together. So I decided to present my choice to my parents one evening after planning it with my going to be husband. My mom's home was on the third floor and that evening the electricity decided to be merciless by not shining on us. And my poor husband had to prove his prowess by climbing up three floors in the dark to meet his future in-laws and going to be bride. After settling down with a glass of water on the couch, I summoned my parents and my brother and introduced him as Sundaram my friend. My mom greeted him and went inside to make some goodies and tea. My father, in his usual nonchalant manner, came and sat down on his usual chair, looked at us through his glasses. Mm. I ran inside thinking that they should break the ice. Let them do it. Let me run away. When I came back, after 10 minutes, the TV was on. Both were in their positions, watching it with rapt attention. What do you expect? It was a cricket match going on. There was no ice melted. Little did I realize that my father had not even spoken a word to him. So I quietly nudged him. Daddy, what are you doing? Are you embarrassing me? He, in his usual self, spoke loudly back to me in spite of me wanting to keep it hush-hush. He said, I'm waiting for Sridhar to come. I don't want to talk to all your silly friends. Let them all come, then I'll start beginning the conversation. Little did he know he had insulted me by saying this as Sridhar and Sundaram was the name of the same person. As any Tram Bram family would know, the eldest one in the family takes on the grandfather's name, but always known by the names that his parents keep at home. That was my husband's and my dear father's first rendezvous. This was remembered and laughed at fondly at many gatherings later on in life. So friends, Laughter is audible. We rarely laugh to ourselves. Even in our most raucous moments, communicating through humor is subtle and sophisticated. Humor is everywhere. It sets us free to provide us the license to laugh. So keep laughing, healthy, keep young, and keep being funny. Look around for everyday humor. Over to you, Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you, Toastmaster Sudha, for an entertaining speech. I was just wondering whether uh, Mr. Sundar, uh, uh, Mr. Sundaram Aka, Mr. Sridhar was listening over your shoulders uh, to, to what you were saying. <laughs> anyway, yeah, wonderful. He's next door. <laughs> he's in my practice anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much. And now let us give Toastmaster Sudha 30 second feedback on. Uh, her speech of this morning.
Thank you so much. Come the pandemic, come the digital era for Toastmasters, come online meetings. And with that, the role of VPPR has assumed a totally different dimension. Yes, I'm going to talk about the role of the Vice President Public Relations, which today has become an important cog in the wheel for all the activities of a Toastmasters club. Given the way that guests interact with our clubs, either through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or any which way, the role of VPPR has become very significant and is an important aspect for the growth of the club. One of the regular activities that we can talk about is for the VPPR to be involved with the distribution of promotional materials, to be involved with flyers, to ensure that all the posts, all the minutes are posted regularly on the social media and to ensure that guests are brought at the doorstep of Mumbai speakers. So this is in brief about what a VPPR's role will be. And for those of you who aspire for this role, you're all welcome to send in your nominations for this position. That was just a brief a teaser trailer about the different roles. And in the interest of time, I think we'll have to rush through the rest of the session, but now it is time for an interesting segment, which all of you know, the table topics segment. And to take us through this session, we have a Toastmaster who is, as he calls himself, a lifelong learner with a childlike curiosity. Wonderful. This is none other than Toastmaster Vishal Shah. Now, when I asked for his take on leadership, he had something very interesting. I'll make it rather brief. He said, leadership doesn't come with design alone or with authority, but it comes with actions, knowledge, and the ability to empathize. I think that is one word which is very, very important for every leader to understand. So without further ado, let us now hand over the stage to Toastmaster Vishal for his table topics for this morning. Over to you, Toastmaster Vishal. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I hope uh, I am audible and visible to you all. Uh, good morning again. Am I, am I audible and visible to all? Yeah. Yes. yes, you are, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, with that, again, good morning. Uh, thank you. Toastmaster uh, uh, Babu sir and fellow Toastmasters and I don't think we have guests yet so uh, table, table topics is a very interesting uh, section which I think everybody is looking forward to. This uh, section helps members practice art of improvisation and helps us think on our feet. This helps us develop four vital communication skills, listening, thinking, organizing and delivering. The tools that I have prepared for you will hopefully help all of us become better at improvisation. Since uh, uh, we at Toastmasters try to provide speakers opportunity to maximum audiences, uh, audience members, this session is not restricted to members alone. But since we don't have any guests, do we have any guests? Am I missing that? I don't think we have guests, right? Okay. So even if they were guests, they could have participated in the same. I hope everybody gives this a shot and um, I may randomly call anyone to participate or you may volunteer yourself to come on stage yourself. Uh, before we begin, I request a timer to hand out the timing guidelines for the table topics round. Over to you, timer.
so i don't see the timer uh, hardik you are on mute can you unmute yeah for uh, table topics uh, time allotted is 1 to 2 minutes 1 to 2 minutes thank you thank you all uh, so with that any volunteers to start off with any volunteers or should i start calling out people engelbert has raised his hand thank you engelbert uh, great so my first uh, topic first topic for the day is who has influenced you the most as a leader and why who has influenced you as a leader and why and you should uh, share an incident which you got uh, influenced by this person this person should be known to you a personally close uh, you know individual thank you okay thank you thank you toastmaster vishal so the person with whom i i really revere the most in terms of a leadership role or a leadership skill is definitely my mother so my mother is a retired banker and i've always seen her in every given role how she is very calm very polite at the same way she knows where to draw a line she knows when to become stern so all these qualities has helped me and and the best way they say you know the best way is action speaks louder than words so i've always seen her in action so it became very easy for me to learn from her starting from the way to speak in public uh, so one of the best skill what i learned is public speaking the basic lessons i learned from her usually she would train me a lot she would uh, before i do any of my speeches or any of my you know comparing uh, assignment she would entire write the script she would first write the script she would read out to me she would teach me how should i speak later on she would take my rehearsals and it would go one day two days sometimes even three days in a row so on the day of assignment she would also be present that also i'm talking when i was as big as 18 years 20 years she would be there okay and she would observe me and she would give me a feedback so the the greatest comedy what used to happen even after 3 days of rehearsal do i used to do well but none of the script everything was out of the script so that was uh, the comedy but still my mom never gave up she always taught me and apart from that many other skills like being on time and many other things i have learned from her yeah so all in all i think i refer my mom as a leader thank you over to you postmaster vishal thank you thank you postmaster engelbert uh, very well uh, very well said uh, moms are our first influence and so it's very natural that you remember your mom we all remember our parents with that uh, uh, thank you once again i'll go to the next question any anybody who would like to volunteer okay i think sudha has uh, volunteered okay sudha um, so what is a what is a quality of a person that makes you follow them and why what is the quality of a person that makes you follow them and why special for me there are two important qualities of a leader uh, which i look up to and uh, definitely like to imbibe them in my style of leadership one is definitely consistency which means walk the talk i think there are a lot of people who talk a lot but they don't practice what they talk and that really puts me off when it comes to leadership so i think it's very important for me to see that the person knows where he is coming from and he obviously means what it uh, takes to follow those things that he preaches that's one and the second thing is a very important aspect is uh, empathy and uh, if the person doesn't show empathy towards people i think he's no good to be there so these are definitely two qualities which i really look upon and uh, there are some striking values value systems also which makes me feel that this person can be a great leader so one incident was definitely i think my boss uh, uh, in uh, lloyds i remember um, he had made me realize that you know you just do what is right you don't need to prove 
a lot to the people and that's enough for people to shut their mouth and i remember when i joined the bank there were all the old fuddy duddies and i was the youngest at that time and uh, when he put me forth to those um, high net worth individuals who had a lot of money but and a lot of experience and i lacked both so for me to sit in front of them and be able to represent my company was taking a lot and my boss actually told me that you know so that if i believed in you and i've hired you that means you are good so just go ahead and do what you think is right so those kind of striking value systems also makes a big difference in a, in a leader thank you over to you thank you so that uh, that was really an amazing uh, you know experience that you shared uh, you know i also have you know many incidences where uh, my bosses have really believed in me and that's why i am where i am i would not really have gone into becoming uh, what i am today because of one incident that i could remember um, you know, they they knew that i was good with uh, let's say uh, you know some particular thing and i did not really bother about Uh, you know pursuing further they pushed me and that's where uh, you know we changed the direction of uh, what i am doing thank you sudha thank you uh, with that uh, any anybody else who would like to volunteer or should i call out somebody anybody who like joy to? joy joy is there joy okay joy i don't see joy hold on plenty of people looking for joy in their lives yeah <laughs> Yeah, Joy. Thanks. Uh, so, Joy, my question is: share any memory from your school or college days where you were influenced by somebody, and why were you influenced? I think that would have to be uh, one of my science teachers. Science is uh, not really uh, one of my favorites, but uh, there was this one teacher who had different methods as compared to everybody else. So, when you're going to school. you um you know mostly expect the teaching method where teachers will refer to the textbooks and then go on and on and on uh most of it is just boring uh we just have to go ahead and learn everything and regurgitate that during uh, you know our our tests and exams which really doesn't allow us to go ahead and think for ourselves but uh this this teacher right so the physics teacher he used to go ahead and challenge the way we would think and why he influenced me is because um, you know unlike everybody else this guy wanted us to go ahead and be able to get ready for life you know because that is what is required you have to be able to challenge the norms you have to be able to think for yourself and you have to be able to go ahead and do things differently rather than you know confining yourself to the norm so uh, something that i still believe in right so uh, he was influential and uh, I mean, he had a lot of questions, you know, more than just asking. I mean, more than just answering stuff. He used to go ahead and ask a lot of questions, and he was willing to go ahead and give people the benefit of the doubt that they can be wrong, which you don't see with a lot of teachers. You know, the moment you're wrong, the moment you're not, um, you know, giving answers which are given in the textbook, they would get angry. But he would allow you to actually be wrong, because that is like the beginnings of you know thinking for yourself. and uh, being a little more independent than what is given as per society and as per the experts so he was influential wow joy i i totally agree with you and you get influenced by people who allow you to make your mistakes and you revere them you revere them because yeah. only once you make your mistake then you realize whether uh, you know whatever you think in your mind is right or not thank you joy to which uh, for sharing your experience Uh, so i think hardik uh, rithik sorry rithik wants to go next so rithik um, my question to you can you hear me rithik yes 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 my question yes all right you're there uh, so my question to you is have you noticed ever anybody getting influenced by somebody uh, a wrong person okay wrong person and what according to you was the reason they got influenced so wrong influence i'm talking about a wrong influence yeah i noticed this a lot thank you toast master vishal for giving this opportunity so uh, wrong influence uh, i see a lot of times why that happens because uh, anybody can get the achievements and uh, prestige in their life with uh, wrong ways so uh, what people see uh, they see who is uh, uh, 
uh, doing better in, in their field or uh, anything what they want to achieve. Suppose if I want to achieve something and someone is already good in that, so we only care, we also want to be that. And uh, that uh, person who is better, uh, like achieved that thing, we uh, abruptly started to start following him. But that should not happen. The thing which should ideally happen, we should uh, take a look on like what that person uh, brings the value into that field or uh, in anything which we want to achieve or something. And what, what are uh, his or her uh, ideology about that thing. So uh, this happens a lot. If you take an example of politics also, people wants to be politician and uh, they end up becoming the bad politicians. So that happens a lot. And my observation is pretty simple. Uh, uh, just see what you want to achieve and pick the right person who is having the right ideology because achievement is not important. The ideology is important more than that. Over to you, Toastmaster Vishal. Thank you, Rithik. Yeah, rightly said, ideology, ideology matters a lot. Uh, you know, these days, uh, I see that media and the popular culture has led many of us uh, to believing things which are not really on track and we, we really lose the track of where we should be rather than what you should be doing. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Rithik, once again. Anybody else? Next. Uh, Walter. So I think Walter wants to speak. Uh, all right. Uh, so Walter, my question to you is, uh, in a team of equals, if everybody is equal, how should be a leader elected and why? How should you, in team of equals, in team of equals, how should be a leader elected and why? So I didn't hear in team of equals. Yeah, so if everybody is equal, Oh, okay. How do you how do you decide who is going to be a leader? How do you elect a leader? See, uh, thank you, thank you for this topic. So basically, in team of equals, uh, whom to be selected the first? So basically, if if you look at the what are the equals? If you look at the knowledge is equal, commitment is equal, experience is equal, and whom should be uh, uh, chosen as a leader? So. So basically we'll have to look further in detail. So the, the, the characteristics like how he cooperate with other stakeholders, how you handle the situations uh, in, in choosing the leadership is not a success. It's a, how he handles the failures, how you, how he takes the situation which are come out of the proportions and how we handle those things which are very critical. And I think we'll have to choose those characteristics because it's not a knowledge, it's not a success rate. It's the person's ability to handle the situation, think differently. And that I think should become a long-term leader and become a visionary uh, kind of person. So I think we'll have to choose those characteristics. If you look at the, uh, just everyone knows the cricket. So if you look at the Indian cricket team, the selection of Dhoni was surprised at that point of time. But then I think that was a real thing because he was not a, if you look at this scale of the qualities at that point of time, I think he was nowhere in the anyone's mind, but he was chosen and he has proven that quality. I think that's a critical thing and choosing a leader or choosing a person who will follow or taken up to the next level is also biggest uh, challenging task according to me. And that's it from my end. Thank you, Walter. In fact, you know, when I was framing this question, I too had cricket in mind. How do they choose a captain? I mean, like rightly said, uh, Dhoni was a wonderful choice. But you know, I, I was wondering why? How? How did? How did that happen? How did they choose a gem of a person like Dhoni? And he be, he became a, such a great leader. Uh, you know, that's thanks. Uh, thanks, Walter. Once again, who would like to go next? Uh -huh. Vishal, I think we'll have to uh, probably stop here. Sure. It's almost sure. thing behind schedule. Yeah. Can we? Sure, sure. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So maybe you can call on the uh, timer for the timer report. Yes. Yeah. Uh, may I have the timer to uh, present the report? Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Vishal. So for the icebreaker, uh, Toastmaster Vishal Mehta took four minutes, 45 seconds, which is a qualifying time for prepared speeches. 
toast master ajay sharma took 6 minutes and 30 seconds which is again a qualifying time uh toast master deep shah took 5 minutes 48 seconds which is also which also qualifies uh toast master sudha took 7 minutes and 30 seconds which is also a qualifying time for table topics toast master vishal shah took 2 uh, minutes which is a qualifying time uh toast master sudha took 1 minutes and 41 seconds which again uh, is a qualifying time toast master joy took 1 minute 1 minute 44 seconds which is again a qualifying time toast master rithik took 1 minutes 17 seconds which again is a qualifying time um and the last toast master walter took 1 minutes 52 seconds which again is a qualifying time o- over to you toast master uh, babu uh okay yeah thank you uh, uh timer hardik for uh, your detailed report in fact i would have loved for the uh, lecture to be passed on to the table topics master but any which way let us put our hands together for that very engrossing session of table topics conducted by toast master vishal sha thank you so much toast master vishal wonderful toast master Vishal. of the day babu we can have the polls as well okay fine yeah so i have uh, or uh, yeah as uh, the timer has said all of them have qualified so if we can have the polls for the uh, both the segments best prepared speaker and uh, best table topic speaker awaiting two more responses thank you so much is done uh, i'm launching the polls for the best table topic speaker members are requested to vote okay okay i think while uh, that is on uh, let me get on in the interest of time again we have spoken about four positions in the executive committee and now we are left with the top 3 the one that i would like to speak about is the vice president membership but probably what i will do is that suffice it to say that the vice president membership is the person who is ultimately or primarily responsible for conversion of guests to the members now what does it entail probably i will send out a detailed note on this yeah let's finish our polling Okay. Thank you so much. The polling is done. Okay. Again, as I said, in the interest of time, let us move on with our most important segment of every session, every club session, and that is the evaluation or the feedback session. And for this, we have a veteran toastmaster, a DTM in his own right. he is none other than dtm subramanyam a veteran toastmaster of 5 years standing a past area director a toastmaster who achieved the distinguished toastmaster status in the year 2020 he believes that leadership is a crown that adorns those people who serve fellow people towards a common goal but the catch line is without their eyes on fancy titles i think that phrase sums it all so over to you dtm subramanyam for the general evaluation thank you so much toastmaster of the day uh, toastmaster babu sir first we will go ahead with the first set of uh, segment which is the speech evaluation segment we had four different speakers and the first speaker we had toastmaster vishal who gave his ice breaker to evaluate toastmaster vishal we have a person who is a toastmaster for the last two years and i when when i asked her about the theme who or what situation had brought in the leader from you she told uh, when she was reassigned to when she was assigned to manage the launch of a new product so let us hear from toastmaster parmita to evaluate toastmaster vishal speech 
Over to you, Toastmaster Pernita. Pernita, sorry. Thank you so much, General Evaluator, and good afternoon, everyone, again. With due reverence to our speaker, Vishal Mehta, today, who opened his speech innings in a regular, but not so regular way for me, I feel excited to open this first layer of evaluation sandwich. That is what the speaker excelled at today. Here, I would say the ease of flow which was, with which was delivered, the content of the speech specifically, and along with that, the fluency and conviction with which it was delivered, it was, I would say, bang on there. It was a big bang opening in that icebreaker speech from Vishal. We all know that icebreaker is the first speech for any speaker. And normally we find that, okay, because that is the first speech. So we don't expect a speaker to be very, you know, well prepared on every aspect. But then I think you proved wrong. That thinking was proved wrong today. And you were so well prepared, you were so fluent, and you knew what the content you were delivering. So it was icebreaker. We today got to know who Vishal is, what are the relations that matters in his life and makes him full. And also we knew, we also got to know that you have very beautiful techniques that will make you unique even in your further speeches. And the few techniques that I would like to point out over here that actually influenced me is the hammering technique that you used, where you kept on uh, repeating the word regular, but uh, with, which I understood was with that reverse psychology that we were using. So it was bang on there. It did add that flavor to your speech. And secondly, I would say the element of humor. When that element of humor is brought in in the speech, it takes it to a level higher. You can actually connect to the audience and they get more time to grasp what you are saying. Now, we always have a scope of improvement. And what I could say what you can excel at is, as we know, this icebreaker is the only um, speech, I would say, where you talk or you get the chance to talk about you and yourself alone. And I missed that part a little bit. Like the way you delivered the story of your grandfather, I was somewhere looking for some intimate incident in your life, which could have connected the audience forever to you, to Vishal, that image would have etched. So that was what I was looking in the icebreaker speech. A challenge, I would say to you, for future speeches, add those pauses and cadence in your speech, and it will surely go higher and higher. Overall, an excellent icebreaker speech. Journey has just begun, and I wish you a Godspeed. Thank you. Over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Pernita, for that uh, beautiful, meticulous, and also very encouraging uh, feedback from your side. Let's move ahead with the second evaluator. We had our second speaker, Toastmaster Ajay, giving his speech. And to evaluate him, in my opinion, a leader is one who assumes responsibilities without, with prayer appointment or even at the last minute, at the eleventh hour. And when we asked this person, he assumed with so much of joy and with greater happiness and joy, let me introduce our second evaluator, Toastmaster Joy Bisilva. Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Subhu. So Ajay, uh, you know, one of the uh, challenges that we have as evaluators, right? Challenges, drawbacks, whatever you call it, is sometimes we don't know the intention of the speaker. Sometimes we don't understand the purpose of the speaker. Your speech was titled, Can Certainty. So if I may please go ahead and ask you, what does this title mean? And why did you go ahead and choose this particular title? So I'm gonna go ahead and um, you know, probably violate the rules of all evaluation and ask you to go ahead and please share what you mean by this particular title, please. Uh, joy, it means uh, 
cancer is like a disease it is this unknown i mean it can affect to anyone and cancer can develop almost anywhere in our body it is like the uncertain we are four siblings my two my younger uh, brother and my sisters they both are affected so this is the reason i choose this uh, can uncertainty so it is i mean it's uncertain you cannot know it is it's all of a sudden it happen and it going to happen to everyone i mean i i'm not going to say but unfortunate this has happened to me so i choose this topic so i mean you can guess okay thank you for sharing that ajay uh, now when you went ahead and uh, shared this topic right i was a little curious myself and also there was a lot of curiosity around this topic how it comes across is um, you know cancer is something that is certain and it will happen to everyone which is not what uh, the numbers suggest per se it is one of the top reasons for death however it is not even in the top 5 there are more reasons how people or more causes of how people would die um, as compared to cancer but having said that uh, coming back to how you went ahead and um, you know did your speech okay it was uh, pretty well structured um and that is the entire point of picking a research topic right you have to be able to go out and structure your speech well so you did that brilliantly you started with a question what is the first word that comes to your mind when you hear the word cancer it's a great way to go out and start a speech now unless it's a rhetorical question you might want to go out and even get a few answers from the audience why not get them to go ahead and share the answers on the chat box unless it's a rhetorical question that allows you to also understand the audience which is one of the important facets of public speaking do you know your audience and when you start with a question you pretty much get to gauge the knowledge levels of the audience okay so that is uh, the one recommendation that i have if you're starting with a question wait for a few answers but overall it was pretty good you went ahead and probably covered level 1 of cancer so you can really deep dive and go into a whole lot of details you did not do that given the time frame which is good you kept it very very simple something that even you know a 5 year old would be able to go and understand you shared a few statistics you outlined reasons both social and environmental reasons and the best part about it is the fact that you went ahead and shared a couple of personal stories yeah so you were able to go ahead and engage with the audience you added a little bit of emotion and you were able to go ahead and also tell us a few things of how you can go ahead and avoid cancer yeah so tobacco processed food physical exercise So all in all, uh, I like the structure. I like the fact that you made it personal by sharing those uh, stories. I was only confused about the uh, topic per se, uh, which comes out as something which is certain. You know, it is going to happen for sure, which is which is debatable. But then again, understanding your intention and your purpose, I now I'm now able to relate to that. So very well done. Uh, nothing. Uh, no more recommendations from my end. So it's a pretty. Uh, good to improve speech as compared to the first one i remember your first one still and uh, all the best for all your upcoming speeches in the future okay so good luck thanks sir thank you so much sir thank you master uh, subu yes thank you so much uh, toastmaster joy uh, for that uh, detailed uh, feedback we had our third speaker toastmaster deepsha who uh, who gave his speech and to evaluate him we have a we have an evaluator who is who loves good books great food and soulful music and also the kadak chai when i asked her about the theme um, you know uh, who or what situation brings the leader in you she told she always shy, uh, shies away from leadership roles i would totally disagree being taking an evaluator role that itself is a great leadership uh, thank you so much and uh, let me invite toastmaster tanvi to present her uh, evaluation thank you so much general evaluator a very good afternoon to everyone present here today today toastmaster deep gave us a very interesting topic of masi i would love to commend him first of all on this amazing acronym which had me hope right from the beginning what was he going to talk about m a s i what kind of an acronym it was so kudos on getting that curiosity peaked right at the outset even before you came on stage the moment you came on stage i noticed that you had a very professional setup even though this is a virtual meeting so kudos on that as well and you began with a lot of confidence so i knew at the outset that i was in for a treat and you delivered on 
I loved the use of humor that you had sprinkled throughout direct order from the commander in chief or right at the introduction where you had that drunk person saying more gin. I loved how you brought in that situational humor in there. Great job done. Thirdly, I loved that you had a very, very interesting take on this topic of communication styles by bringing in relatable instances from a party to Diwali to the time when you had guests at home. So brilliant job done there with relatable uh, topics that all of us could certainly agree with or have felt at some point of time or the other. Now that said, I would like to give you two specific recommendations to make your speech even more impactful. First, while I loved that you had great usage of situational um, relatable ideas, examples in your speech, anecdotes in your speech, I wondered if you could perhaps have given a more, um, what was your message? What was your takeaway? What is your style that you follow? And what is it that you would take away or would you would like us to take away from that perhaps could you recommend a particular style that we should use for maximum impact for instance you could have mentioned something like when you need to get things done like my mother had to get me um the kaju katli at any cost so she used the direct style and it got the job done something like that would have given me an idea as to how those different styles actually work and how they come into play secondly sort of related to this point is also, could you have included some um, interaction with the audience by asking questions? What is your style? How do you get things done? Have you noticed a change when you use this style versus that style? That would have got me thinking and even more invested in what you were saying. So that said, a brilliant setup, brilliant um, usage of humor, situational uh, anecdotes, which added to a lot of interest in the story. And of course, a wonderful title, a little more focus on having a clear takeaway for the audience, a clear message. And secondly, a little more audience interaction. And I'm sure that your speech will be absolutely unforgettable. Over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Tanvi, for that uh, uh, wonderful uh, feedback and the comments. We had our fourth speaker, Toastmaster Su uh, Sudha. Uh, to evaluate her speech, we have a Toastmaster from Articulators Club. She is a reader, traveler, and a blogger. And when, she, when I asked her about related to the theme, she mentioned when she had to fill the shoes of her father after his demise, even though she was in college, I think that has brought the true leadership out of her. So let's have Toastmaster Shweta to present her evaluation. Thank you, Toastmaster Subbu. So first of all, I would like to congratulate Toastmaster Sura for successfully completing her LCP2 today. So, and a very great job done at that, right? Now coming into the evaluation for her speech today, I will say that she started on an intriguing note with the ohm sound in three different pitches. And she absolutely had me sold on the efficacy and the need for vocal variety, especially when she likened her voice to a musical instrument, which pretty much takes us through the um, integrities of public speaking and why it is critical to public speaking as well, right? And I could see that she had put in a lot of effort in uh, writing her speech especially since she's embellished it with such beautiful language and at the risk of sounding like a grammarian of the day, I would definitely call out the set of alliterations and great words that she used, like uh, proving his prowess or for that matter nonchalant or rendezvous or for that matter raucous moments, right? So absolutely gems of words which are not used in a common context, but then they absolutely stood out and made the speech more engaging and fun to listen to. Um, now that being said, she definitely met her objectives of not only, um, you know, talking or sharing a couple of anecdotes, which was her main goal for the speech today, and also the vocal variety aspect, which she kind of demonstrated throughout the speech couple of recommendations uh, to Sudha uh, for taking the speech to the next level. One thing I would definitely call out is that there, um, if you could have a common thread running through the speech, because when you started off the speech, 
you went gaga over vocal variety and uh, gave us the need of why vocal variety is indeed required. But then when you actually concluded, you talked about how engaging humor is part of one of the most essential parts of a speech, right? So that kind of threw me off a bit because there was a bit of a disconnect between the starting and the conclusion of the speech, right? So that is one point I'd probably ask you to work on. Like uh, maybe you could have um, incorporated a commonality in the theme of the speech. And I assume, I presume that when you titled your speech, it's there, look for it. I think it was the sense of humor, which you kind of closed with. So probably a beginning talking about the sense of humor would have more, made a bit more sense is what uh, I feel. And it's genuinely purely my opinion. The second thing that I would essentially also call out is that uh, you had two different stories in the speech, right? But then the first story, you probably gave out a motto or kind of a takeaway with that story where you said that you didn't listen to your mother on the, you know, uh, different uh, proportions that were required for making the dosa batter. However, with the second story, I could not see that uh, takeaway coming out of it, right? So in a leadership role, obviously stories are used as parables, right? Which probably religious leaders or leaders of uh, for used earlier, right? Where there has to be kind of a small takeaway or a moral associated. So if you could find that thread as well, that will definitely take you to the very next level. And to challenge yourself, especially on the vocal variety aspect, I believe you could try role play to an extent where you could probably um, try playing your father, talking about how he's waiting for Sridhar instead of Sundaram, and yourself showing those expressions as to really it's the same person, right? So that could give you a higher range of vocal variety or a bigger spectrum to deal with. And I think I'm viciously over time. Uh, thank you, Sudha. Thank you, Toastmaster Sudha. And thank you everyone for listening to my rant and over to you, Toastmaster Sudhu, for uh, the next segment. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Shweta, for that, uh, uh, you know, very well observed uh, comments that you have given. Uh, I really love those points. Thank you so much. Before calling out the poll for best evaluator, I would like to call the timer Toastmaster Hardik to present his uh, timing reports on the evaluators. Thank you, Toastmaster Sue. Uh, Toastmaster Pernita took three minutes, uh, 27 seconds. Uh, she qualifies. Uh, Toastmaster Joy took four minutes uh, to disqualify. Toastmaster Tanvi took uh, three minutes, 30 seconds. She qualifies it. Uh, Toastmaster Shweta took four minutes and five seconds. Uh, that's disqualifying. Uh, thank you. Over to you, Toastmaster Subhu. Yes. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Hardik, for, for uh, uh, detailing the report of the timer uh, regarding the, to the time. Now I'd request to launch the poll. The poll is on the screen. Members are requested to vote, please. Okay, uh, can I proceed? Yes, you may. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So next, we have in line uh, the R counter. Usha, can you please present your R counter report? Okay, thank you so much. It's been a long day for me, keeping track of all that. But overall, let me conclude that there were very hard, the speakers were good, the prepared speech was good. And overall, there was not so much of work for the R counter, though I had to concentrate a lot. To start with the TMOD, Babu Narayan, I think you used filler sounds at two places, crutch words at one place, uh, and the word decision was used twice in a line. So totally three numbers. We had uh, for the prepared speech, TM Vishal, the filler sound was used once. Uh, the, uh, the words regular and single, though I find it was used purposefully, but I still find that it was used too many times in the same words, the same sentence or in the context, both the word regular and singular. So it's a total south to three. Uh, the topic, uh, the prepared topic on cancer, Ajay, you had two long pauses and also a lot of repeat words in terms of was, has, he, 
so many and we i think you have to be a little conscious there in the prepared speech by deep we i totally got got lost in masi so i have not noted much and i don't think there were a lot of fillers or repeat verses there as far as sudha is concerned as she started with a long pause might be the start could have been a little different i do not know whether it's a long pause or it was it was part of the prepared speech itself so that's that's one thing that i could say timer hartik you had a filler sounds and crutch words in two three places however the word qualifying time i think you could have been used a little bit more consciously and overall your speech came out a little bit hesitantly that's what i could add uh from the case of table topics yes there were a lot of uh, cases where we had the word e or a or fillers used i think the table topics uh, people can improve uh but overall uh, engelbert you use the word repeat word basic couple of times uh joy or i think you use the word that walter you used couple of words basically so how i think a multiple times and that's how i would like to conclude my uh, feedback on as a our counters uh, as of today thank you so much thank you so much uh, test master usha our counter is one of the uh, toughest uh, roles in terms of uh, tag reports and and also delivering the report without fillers that also requires so much of uh, practice i think you did a fabulous job on that Thank you so much, and let's have our next role player, Toastmaster Mehak, to present her grammarian report. Thank you, Toastmaster Subhu. Um, it was difficult to uh, to keep track of all the people today because everybody was great speakers, extremely good use, extremely great, awesome use of uh, vocabulary also, um, and very good use of phrases. Uh, I'll start with the word of the day. Babu sir used it once. Vishal uh, sir used it once. Um, Ajay Sharma used it once. Deep used it once. Uh, Engelbert used it once. Vishal Shah used it twice, and uh, Pernita used it once. Uh, moving on to the awesomeness that was there uh, during the entire meet, uh, with the words, the new words that I got to learn were um, emulate, uh, repertoire, embellishment, incessantly, nonchalant, rendezvous. efficacy and uh, parables um and there were lovely phrases that were there uh i can start with um this um toastmaster usha's um, use of habit the the removing the h then the a then the bit and then the it that was like that is so catchy i as i'm going to remember that uh then there was echoing qualities i someone used echoing qualities um behind every successful man there's a woman always to remember that number crunching a compound word we should be able to use more compound words uh human voice is the organ of the soul again that was bang on calm before the storm um actions speak louder than words walk the talk ideologies are more important than achievements that is that should be everybody's motto and everybody's uh, everybody should follow that uh yeah that will be all the awesomeness today and mistakes i i wouldn't say there were mistakes in the sense uh, the corrections would only be in using the art, uh, our articles that are a and and the in most correct ways possible so you have you need to build your speech such that you are placing them properly and pronouns somewhere or the other you misplace a pronoun use something else rather than the other and sometimes pronunciation of the words we get it wrong so it would be very it would be a recommendation to uh, listen to the google pronunciation sometimes before uh, when you are writing the speech and then when you are uh, trying to uh, practice the speech then you listen to the uh, correct pronunciation before you come and speak here yeah i'm i'm done today <laughs> over to you uh, general evaluators subhu 
Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Mehet, for uh, presenting a detailed uh, grammarian report. And I would definitely second uh, whatever you mentioned. All of them used fabulous words, and I, I also have noted uh, some of them. OK, so let me present my general evaluation report. I would try to be very uh, quick. Uh, first, the Sergeant at Arms, Walter, uh, he started on time and uh, with detailed guidelines about the online meeting, very interactive exercise that he started that rejuvenated all of us. Then uh, also, he th there was one particular point which I loved. Uh, please have a thank you as well as over to you. I think we do this in our in-person meeting, start with, you know, you, you hand over the stage with a proper handshake. So that was in line with whatever he mentioned. Thank you so much for uh, doing that. And the transition to the uh, next uh, presiding officer that was also beautifully done. And the best part was he used the word of the day of previous week, just remembered and used it. That was a job well done. Moving ahead to pres presiding officer Toastmaster Glenn, he acknowledged the club achievement on this medley award, not just that he also went on explaining what is this medley award and what is the significance of it, a job well done. And uh, the transition, beautiful transition to the TMOD. I would, at this point, I would like to give, uh, I request all the audience to pat on your own back because there were some, some, uh, you know, some other sound uh, coming from his side and all of you were very, very uh, encouraging and I could see very uh, beautiful comments like there, this is a different drum roll. So that, that is that is the, you know, spirit of uh, the, the club members. Thank you so much for that. Moving ahead to Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Babu. He connected very well with the introduction given by the presiding officer about the stock, mar stock market and uh, he, why he doesn't want to make it as a hobby. And he also presented the images of world leaders, made it very interactive, asked, uh, acknowledged the responses from the audience. Uh, it was like a wisdom class I was sitting in. He shared his nine C's okay, from his own experience. That was beautiful. And... Um, Introduction of the role players was also done beautifully. Standing ovation for the first speaker, the icebreaker speaker that was done. And uh, uh, referencing to our one Toastmaster leaders like Deepak Menon, sir. Then beautiful thought on uh, uh, explaining about the leadership role, which is in line with the election that is going to happen uh, recently. I think that was very well thought of. Probably the theme is also set uh, based on that, I believe. Uh, and uh, the phrase that he used, Glenn or Jai, Joy is always ours. You know, that presence of mind, I would like to uh, applaud on that part. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Babu. And uh, moving on to the prepared speeches, already they have been evaluated. Still, I would like to give a glimpse of how each one of them fared. Vishal Mehta, I would definitely second. It was not at all an icebreaker speech. I found the scripting of the speech was beautiful. The way the content has been scripted was beautiful. And that was a funny ending, which normally even experienced Toastmasters doesn't try to include it and you include it in the very first time. Second speaker, Toastmaster Ajay, uh, who gave, it was a very detailed researched content, yet he presented with some personal stories. I think with research content and uh, entangling with uh, personal stories, that is a very rare phenomenon that happens in many of the speeches. I think you fared very well on that and with your own personal experiences. Toastmaster Deep Shah, I still remember your icebreaker speech where you mentioned about something about deep, okay, the word deep. So I remember the speech that, that day also I was the general evaluator and it is a very intriguing title which was uploaded by your evaluator as well and uh, curiosity, your hand gestures, humorous humorous content and also your body, just, body movements was also uh, very good. And um, behind your humorous speech, I don't know who is that particular woman. Okay, um, Toastmaster Sudha, she started with uh, settling, setting the Shruti of, uh, you know, uh, of uh, any song uh, with some humming. And uh, throughout you were smiling, word play very well done, calm before the storm. That is one point I have noted. And pleasantly presented the humorous part, complete uh, speech. Moving on to the table topics, uh, Master. The significance of table topics that was explained very well and uh, the topics were also beautiful which was completely uh, in line and uh, which was very relevant to today's theme. The first table topic speaker Eng uh, Engelbert, sorry if I am mispronouncing, who is a leader, I think uh, he that was a very touching uh, uh, topic because I, I, also, I also have that same uh, thought process, my mother and of course my father, they both are very good leaders though they don't have any titles. And uh, it was very well shared with the personal experiences. Toastmaster Sudha, yes, she had described two to three qualities and it, for one quality, she described about her personal experiences with her manager and how her manager had empowered her. That was a very well uh, done uh, table topic. Uh, Toastmaster Joy, uh, beautiful hand gestures. I think you have very good command over language, free flow of thoughts, clarity in your thoughts and uh, a personal incident about your physics teacher uh, who kindled and influenced yourself to be a leader. Rithik, 
uh, observations. Uh, you shared your own observations and that beautiful tagline, ideology is more important than achievement. That is going to reverberate in many people's mind even after this meeting. Those must have Walter, uh, he also gave uh, how a leader should be, what are the characteristics, the ability to handle situations. Okay, so now moving ahead to the uh, to evaluators, Toastmaster Pernita, okay, uh, she actually dissected the speech very well and uh, she used the anchor, uh, anchor word used by the speaker, the regular, like regular, not so regular. That was well thought of and the analysis that she presented on content and also the techniques on hammering techniques, that was a job well done. And the concluding remarks was also wonderful uh, in your evaluation where you mentioned, uh, where you related to the title of the speaker that about the journey, you used some line I forgot, I, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't note it down. The summary was also done very well. Toastmaster Joy, he gave a disclaimer and he questioned, he went on questioning the speaker that was, who had an intriguing title as well. And uh, the clarity in your thoughts, same like how you performed in table topics, there is very good clarity in your thoughts, the way you present, I think it is coming free flow. Um, and uh, well analyzed speech, I loved your recommendation, know your audience. I, I think that was very well presented, how, how you should... Uh, how you should engage the audience. I think that point was very well done, very well uh, presented. And you also applauded how the speaker uh, st st sticked only to, to presenting the level one. Okay, you didn't expect too much, but your expectations were was very well uh, communicated. Moving ahead to Toastmaster Tanvi, she used sandwich technique, beautiful analysis of the three good points used by the speaker, recommendation about the two points. I love the takeaway message that she had mentioned, which was very specific. And she also gave one example, how the takeaway message should be and the point on audience interaction. And the hand gestures, despite sitting in a sitting position, she used very good hand gestures that was very appropriate to her evaluation comments. Last evaluator, Toastmaster Shweta, she acknowledged the speaker very well in a very good way. And like her target speaker, she also has a very good command over language. Uh, the pronunciation and enunciation that she had on the words was brilliant. Uh, and um, uh, she also mentioned about how the test speaker, uh, sorry, her target speaker fared in the objectives. Hand gestures were beautiful and um, uh, good observations. And uh, how she also mentioned about the balance in the message that has to be delivered in a speech. Okay, overall, this, this, these were the observations in terms of very good points. Just a couple of recommendations in terms of TMOD, not just for today's TMOD. In general, I am telling the TMOD could st stage the content. For example, the nine Cs. I would have start stopped with the curiosity before the before introduction of the prepared speech and would have went ahead with the remaining eight uh, Cs after a few other segments. Okay, that is one small point. And the prepared speakers, at least the prepared speakers, try to stand and deliver. Uh, I think Ajay uh, student delivered uh, uh, kudos, but others tried to stand and deliver that way because I had I saw uh, first speaker uh, Vishal had wonderful hand gestures, but it was not visible. Okay, so probably if he would have stood and delivered and even uh, deep, though he had very good body movements, probably standing and delivering would also elevate that. Hand gestures, uh, I think you should try to avoid blurred background so that uh, your hand gestures are very good, uh, were, is visible very well. And uh, evaluators, I know we have to read it. So try to maintain eye contact whenever possible. Okay, so these are some of the comments and I thoroughly enjoyed the session. Thanks to Toastmaster Babu sir and also Sudha ma'am for giving this wonderful opportunity. Always, uh, I love to uh, be back as part of the session. Thank you so much. Over to Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, DTM Subramaniam, for an exhaustive evaluation. In fact, I must apologize for uh, having made you rush through a little bit. But nevertheless, I think you did cover almost every small detail that uh, we would have loved to hear from you. Excellently done. Let's give uh, the general evaluator a huge round of applause for that beautiful evaluation of this Thank morning. You. Okay, and now since we are really, really short of time, I will not come in between you, the lunch and your family and suffice it, uh, uh, apologies to Sudha and Shweta as well, because they were supposed to uh, give a few lines on their experiences. We will not be having that. And I shall pass it over to Toastmaster Glenn for his concluding remarks and the poll results. Glenn, are you there? No, he's not. So okay, I'll probably. Sudha, you're it. there. So I still give you the chance. Yeah. Well, thank you. 
Thank you so much, uh, TM Modi. Let's all put our hands together to uh, thank Babu sir. Like the sergeant at arms said that he's, some, or, or the PO said that he's, it's usually the general evaluator. Today he's taken up the lead and given us such an ins exhilarating uh, session with the leadership and who else, but conducted by him, who is our great leader and our great mentor of the club also. Please put our hands together and Thank you so much, Babu sir, for that wonderful session. Very much. Uh, I think we have short over time, so I'm not going to take too much of uh, time to talk too much of um, uh, general stuff. I think let's get to the award ceremony. Uh, but before that, I have still a visiting uh, uh, Toastmasters available because the other two have dropped off for some reason. Pernita, can you please uh, share with us your experience in terms of how you felt our meeting was? You were a part of a contest, I remember, earlier. A quick one. Hi, thank you, Sudha. I think it was a wonderful meeting and uh, joining any meeting out of the home club, it always brings a very experience to you. So I love joining other meetings of other clubs and thank you for giving me this opportunity today. Thank you. I Thank you. think I I had many takeaways even from my home club <laughs> to implement in terms of recommendations because actually that actually helps any club to improve. So on that part, I would say there, there were just two observations that is, I believe might help the club and the members to grow. That is at the time frame of the meeting and each role has given that has been given that definite timeline. So even if we are exceeding somewhere, but then there's some time roles which are very short, but then we need to give due respect and they have got their prerogative to deliver um, their full explanation about their role and they need to hand over. So whenever you do hand over, that means their part is done. So we should not try to somewhere snatch that opportunity, even if the role is small, that was one observation. And secondly is the reporting part. Uh, no doubt i mean it was excellent job done by both the by both the role players who presented the report i mean three reports but then i would recommend that if the screen can be shared and people can see like in case of our counter what were the mistakes or where were the gaps that then where they need to improve that would help that was just just two observations and wonderful meeting thank you again sudha for giving me this opportunity actually i had taken a break for short time for one month and even I didn't join my home club meeting but this is the first meeting I'm joining after that gap. Thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much Pernita and you have to remain till the end of the meeting. Uh, you'll know in a second and uh, the other reason I feel that you almost give us a general evaluator's top up uh, session with your suggestions. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we'll definitely try to incorporate uh, whatever you said. So let's get on to the award ceremony, guys. And uh, the, uh, to announce the winners of today's meeting, let me start with uh, the uh, best auxiliary speaker. Uh, so I'm not going to wait for guesses because of time again. So let's get on with awarding the best auxiliary speaker of the meeting today to to the grammarian of the day, which is Toastmaster Mehek. Please put our hands together and congratulate Toastmaster Mehek. Mehek, you have something quickly to say. I won't. I won't take every everybody's Sunday away from them. Okay, <laughs> but it was, a, it was it was fun today to do this role. I had to listen more than concentrate on my speech. It's always fun to listen to you as well. <laughs> so <laughs> let's spotlight her and get uh, the photo for the winner, please. Are we done? Can we move on? Just one second, so then let me spotlight you as well. Sure. Smile, please. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so going ahead with the next winner of the evening. Why am I saying evening? I really want to fast forward the day it looks like. Uh, the best winner uh, of the best big three, which is none other than 
our TMOD of the day, which is Babu sir. Put our hands together to congratulate him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Babu sir, I'm not going to ask to say more. <laughs> no, I, I think if I start speaking now, suddenly there'll be a blank screen. So. <laughs> no, no. Thank you so much. We, we had a good uh, session uh, reiterating the leadership uh, value in Toastmasters and that to coming through from you. We really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for that. Next, moving on with the best evaluator of the evening. Let's put our hands together to our visiting Toastmaster, Toastmaster Perinita. Thank you so much again. Perinita, if your break just helped you. I think you're coming back with awards again. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Perinita. Uh, we move on to the next uh, uh, award, which is the best speaker award, which goes to our, no, before that, let me uh, talk about the best table topic speaker, which goes to our dear Sergeant at Arms, Toastmaster Walter. Walter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Walter. Do you have something to say? You have been the quiet person up to the opening. So uh, I do. This was surprise. That's it. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I think your Dhoni, Dhoni example always resonates with any Indian in the world. Correct. Congratulations. You, you, you performed like Dhoni today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Walter. And let's put our hands together to congratulate the Toastmaster who is our backbone of the team and is also the best speaker of today's meeting who is inspired by his Masi. Congratulations, Deep, again. Do you have something to say? Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all right. And yours. And uh, appreciate everybody to be here for this meeting and making it a, a rolling success. Uh, looking forward to more. We are going to most probably having uh, evaluation session. Uh, Subhu, sir, thank you so much. Your evaluations have been always very spot on and we really look forward to the suggestions. And believe me, you are our first resort when it, Babu is not there, you're the next person to go to. <laughs> Then we are going to be uh, uh, having a GE session. Please, uh, we'd be happy that you come and take other session, other roles as well in our club. Thank you so yeah, much. Sure, yes. sure. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Great. With this, uh, I would just remind you that we would be having elections coming in the next month. So uh, Babu sir has already given an idea about the different roles. So please, if anybody wants to nominate themselves, is the election officer, please send your nominations. And uh, other than that, I'll keep you posted on the group. I don't want to take too much of your time. Thank you. I declare the meeting closed. <laughs>